Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing my favourite functional lab test, which you haven't, if you haven't already guessed based on how much I talk about it, it's the Her Tissue Mineral Analysis, also known as the HGMA for short. And there's a reason that this is my, well, there's several reasons this is my favourite lab test above the Dutch hormone test, stool testing, fancy urine test. It's cheap, it's cheerful, it's an amazing full body test. And in today's episode, I'm going to be going through a sample report. So this is a great one to watch on YouTube if you're not already, because I'm going to be sharing along and having guiding you through what a test report looks like if you've never seen one, or if you have maybe done one yourself, but you don't really know what you're looking at, I will give you some idea as to what things mean. But I can't go into detail, otherwise we'll be here for about five hours. And that's exactly what my mineral balancing course is for. And if you're listening today, my course Iron Balance is open for enrollment for I think the fourth or fifth time. And up until Sunday, you can get this do-it-yourself mineral balancing course for only £347, which is an absolute steal. But even if you're listening to it after that day, you can still sign up and it will be available on my website website at any point now but the price is going to increase after this enrollment offer. So if you're listening before the, the 18th, yeah, Sunday the 18th, you can get your hands on this course and have lifetime access for just £347, which actually costs less than what my clients pay for a HDMA and a one-off single session with me. So if you are a client of mine, then this is a really good offer. I've got many of my clients on board and they have access to this course now. So instead of having me relying on me to tell them exactly what they need to do they can understand how to read the report what exactly they need to do with the supplements and the diet based on the results and also for the family's health and practitioners and students have been through this course as well you're not technically going to be certified after doing this so it's not a general mineral balancing training that you're going to get a certificate at the end of um but it's good for general information and general understanding. So it's simple enough that the average person can understand, but also goes into the detail and can really help you to use this with clients if that's what you're looking for. There are so many testimonials and so much feedback that I've had because it first started off, I think in 2022 as a group program. And then I've done several rounds since. So we've had people's periods improving, energy is through the roof, digestion is stronger skin and hair are doing better, brain fog clearing, weight stabilizing, minerals affect literally everything, but you need to know exactly what's going on in your body instead of guessing. You, you can't be guessing when it comes to fatigue what's going on because I have, I could have two people, both have brain fog, skin issues and fatigue, but the results are going to be completely different with the minerals and therefore the treatment is going to be different. So I'm balanced, my mineral balancing course, I'm so proud of, includes a HTMA test. So you actually get a test within that price too. And the knowledge to support your health and your healing journey long-term. So even if you just want to like check in now, you'll have the tools then to maybe once or twice a year, look over your results, just order additional test kits, which at the moment are just £99 through me. And you can do this for your loved ones, your partner, your children, your parents, and know exactly what you need to do and be able to understand mineral balancing on a deeper level. I will share more about the course towards the end of this episode, but I want to get into why I love this test so much. I just love functional lab tests in general. They ultimately gave me my health back after years of getting no answers from conventional medical system, being told everything's normal. So either they were testing things and they just told me it was normal because the reference range is are terrible or it's that they weren't actually testing all that they needed to and they were missing a lot of things so htma testing when i found when i found out about that for myself and i tested for the first time i was shocked because this was me already several years into my healing journey but i was still really struggling with my brain function my hormones pretty much everything all of those things that i mentioned before i was dealing with and I'd already done gut protocols and tried to manage my stress. But when I saw what was going on with myself, for me, it was very low calcium levels after years of physical stress from living in mold and having these infections, but also just being on a dairy-free diet for over 10 years. 
that really led to a lot of mineral deficiencies. I had been very restricted in other ways because of food sensitivities. So my diet had, it meant that my diet was very narrow and I wasn't getting a lot of nutrition in. Plus on top of that, I was having absorption issues. So even the food that I was intaking, I wasn't fully benefiting from that. So no wonder I was just struggling with a ton of mineral deficiencies and that was keeping me sick. So until I found out what exactly I needed and supplemented and increased certain foods, rich in those minerals, then that allowed me to, to start to heal. So mineral functional lab tests in general are amazing, but the HDMA is one of the cheapest options. I mean, if we're talking about stool testing, you're, it's going to be around 300 pounds or 300 like dollars, euros for that. But this is also a full body test. The stool test is really just looking at the health of your large intestine whereas minerals affect everything and they are the foundations minerals run enzymes your body runs off enzymes and they allow all other systems in your body to work so if you're trying to balance your hormones heal your gut detox your liver please work on your minerals first or at least simultaneously at the same time as the other stuff otherwise you're missing a huge puzzle piece and your efforts are likely going to go to waste an example is someone trying to recover from SIBO or parasites and they just do the gut protocol but they're in this very depleted state they're very mineral deficient or let's say they have you which you'll learn about uh, shortly a calcium shell imbalance they've got very high calcium that's slowing down the metabolism so when they clear the infection when they clear the parasite it's likely to overgrow again because the slow metabolism is still contributing to slow motility and they haven't addressed the overall terrain of the body, which when it comes to the germ theory, we we know now that the bug isn't the problem. The toxin, the pathogen usually isn't the problem. It's the host, it's the body, it's the terrain, it's the soil that we need to work on. And that's why with COVID, like some people had very serious um, and life-threatening symptoms as a result, versus other people and it was just like a basic cold it was the same virus but our bodies responding very different so the minerals do affect that terrain they just make make or break the overall vitality of your health um a stool test yeah it's just looking at what's going on in the, in the gut the gi tract in the large intestine a hormone test just show what's going on with your endocrine system but a hdma you're just going to get so much more bang for your buck, more for your money. And it's way more accurate than blood work for things like your minerals, calcium, zinc, magnesium. Even when we're trying to assess your stress levels, your cortisol, your stress hormones, your adrenaline can be thrown off by the smallest thing when it comes to cortisol, serum cortisol, testing your blood. It could be that you were late to the appointment, you had a bad night's sleep the night before, you're scared of needles and the blood test just shoots your cortisol through the roof. That's why I'm not a fan of cortisol testing in blood. Whereas the HDMA, you can't really cheat it and it gives you a three month average look as to what's going on. So it's not just a snapshot in time. It's not just looking in the moment what's going on right now. It's looking at how has your health been? How inflamed have you been? How stressed have you been on average over the past three months? And then when we're testing minerals, other than iron, which is the exception, all of the minerals are better tested through her or tissue testing as opposed to blood testing. Because minerals aren't just found floating around in the bloodstream, they are found in the cells, intracellular. And her is or was part of your internal body. It's just old cells that have been released from the body. And that's why when we do the her test, we use the first inch and a half closest to the scalp that that her was in you over the past three months so it's way way more accurate iron is the only exception to the rule because that is found primarily in the bloodstream and this is your chance to just get some clear answers we want to test and not guess i recently just did a big health mlt of my own i haven't done it for a while but i'm trying to do it once a year because now that my health's in a good place i really want to keep it that way i've not I've worked so hard on my health that I'm not going to let it slip at this point. And I practice what I preach. 
in nipping things in the bud before they become a big problem, checking in, continually working on your health and investing in yourself. So I did all sorts. I did a stool test, blood test, hair test, urine test, even a vaginal swab test. And I was surprised by a few things that came back. It's definitely the best that my labs have ever looked and that reflects in the way that I feel. But there are like a couple of, imbal well, a few imbalances that I, I do need to work on, but I'm not really symptomatic at the moment. But this is just classic. If I was to leave them unaddressed, they would eventually get worse over time and it would just take even more money, even more time and effort to reverse them at that stage. So I want to catch them early, address them now. And I did a little poll on my Instagram asking, did you want me to do a podcast episode, me sharing what came back? Because yeah, there was a few things I was like, okay, that's strange. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting things like vitamin D being a bit low and that, that was the case. We didn't really have a summer last year. We didn't get, get much sun at all. And just with genetics, I am a little bit more prone to deficiency. So that was confirmed. But then there were some other things I was a little bit shocked. So let me know if you want to do an episode. And I will. Even, even as a practitioner now, I have my one-to-one -one clients do this test because everyone's results come back different. I am usually pretty accurate if I suspect something like a zinc deficiency or heavy metal exposure. But I also need to know what level we're talking about. Someone, if they're struggling with poor immune system, white spots on the nails, acne, um, they have like excessive burping and signs of low stomach acid, then I'm automatically suspecting a zinc deficiency. That's just practitioner skill and investigation after all these years. But even if they do have a zinc deficiency, ideally, I need to know what, what level or stage that is. Is it very mild? Is it something that's only been happening recently and maybe all that person needs to do is increase their zinc rich foods that could be enough or it could be a major zinc deficiency that requires a lot of intervention and strong supplementation for the next three to six months it, it completely depends so I want to show in this episode an overview of what we can see and assess using the HTMA it really is an art and a science I have done extensive training myself because you need to learn how to uh, interpret this report you can't just order one look at it and see like read it as you see it like oh that's high so that must mean I've got really good levels that's low so I must need a supplement in this that's not the case we really need to know and learn how minerals work in synergy I did a recent podcast episode I think it's a, a few ago like two or three episodes ago about how you can run into issues if you do that, if you just take isolated products for long periods of time, high strength vitamin D, high strength zinc supplements that can deplete your calcium, uh, that can deplete your copper. So it really is important to, to learn what you're doing because if you've been trying to heal and you're DIYing your health in this way, it's probably just gonna lead to worse results, unfortunately. So I will show my screen now. And again, if you want to hop over to YouTube and pause, if you're listening at the moment, so you can watch this next section, that will be amazing. And this is just a sample report. So this, is, this isn't like a client's or my own. Um, but yeah, here we go. So the this is the main first page. And I know that another company, I forgot the name, I think it's ARL Labs, looks a little bit different. I do prefer this trace elements report just the way that it looks it's way more user friendly i think it shows a little bit more than the others so the important things up here i'd say are date so from when you did that sample this will be a reflection of your health for three months prior so this person did it in the first of may so this will be a reflection of the health from february i'd say like february march april time that three month window beforehand the metabolic type is also important. So we get given a classification or a category, fast or slow. There are positives and negatives associated with either. So it's not the ideal to have a fast metabolic type. And it's not, it doesn't reflect directly over to what we think of as a fast metabolism in the fitness sense. So you could have a fast metabolism and be overweight. That was me when I first did the my first ever report you would think that that person would be super skinny, could eat a lot of food and 
just burn through it fast but no you can be a fast metabolic type and be overweight or you can be a slow metabolic type and be underweight so the um, most common one is a slow metabolic type i am a fast metabolic type that is the least common it used to be a 50 50 split about 50 years ago half of the people were fast half were slow but now because of the modern lifestyle people's metabolic types have started to slow down and this really reflects the strength of your adrenal glands or the state of stress that you're in. So a fast metabolic type is more in this overdrive, um, sometimes short-term stress, acute stress. So it's happening currently. Whereas a slow metabolic type tends to be more long-term stress, more chronic, and the body tends to slow down. Their adrenals slow down, their thyroid slows down when that happens. The number at the side is also important the the one number one would be the most ideal so if you're a fast one or a slow one that would be the most pre preferred but as that number goes up the four is the highest that would be the most dysregulated so a fast four four and a slow four are the most imbalanced or the least desirable and it gets again this goes into more detail on the course but a fast four is actually kind of the same thing as, as someone in burnout who's in this four lows pattern and they kind of they have to do the recommendations like a slow metabolic type would if you have no idea what i'm talking about now that is okay but the course will go into more detail because if this is you you would think you need to do one thing and actually you might need to do the complete opposite and yeah the other stuff is um, pretty self-explanatory if you're using scalp hair that is going to look a little bit different than using pubic hair just because that hair is faster growing so you might see more elevated levels just because yeah, you're, you're burning through the minerals a little bit faster. So you need to take that into consideration. I don't recommend using nail clippings. I know that that is an option with some of the websites, but her is best, ideally. So with reading the report, the most important minerals out of all of these in the blue box are the core four. That's calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. These are the mac macro minerals, the master minerals, the big minerals. We need lots and lots of them every single day. It's similar to macronutrients. Those are your proteins, carbs, and fats versus your micronutrients, which are your vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. So the, the macro minerals are calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and the micro minerals or trace minerals, if you will, are the zinc and the chromium and the selenium, the, the rest of the panel. So we always start with the core four to begin with. You want to make sure that they're in a pretty good range because they have influence over the rest of the trace minerals. So if you're trying to balance your, your zinc or your copper or your iron, but your, your core four are really dysregulated, then that's probably why you're not getting results. They um, ideally should be in the white band in the center, somewhere in that, that middle zone. So as you can see with this person, I've already showed that they're a fast four type, but they're in this burnout. And it's called a four lows pattern. So all four of the core four minerals are depleted. So this person has been stressed for a long, long time. They've burned through their minerals and they're really in this ad like adrenal mineral burnout state. They're going to be feeling really tired, exhausted, probably struggling with immune system issues, hormone issues, because they just don't have the, the spark, the building blocks to have things work properly. So calcium... Um, yeah, too low levels can cause issues with your immune system, histamine problems, obviously bone issues. High levels can cause a, a sluggishness in your metabolism, can be very linked to chronic pain. So a high level here is called the calcium shell. That's one of the most common imbalances that I see. And it doesn't mean that they've got really high, really good levels of calcium. It means that they're not processing calcium well in the body and it's actually being stored in the wrong place. It's building up in the soft tissue as opposed to the bones and the teeth where 99.9% .9 of it should be. So this person is yeah building up calcium in the wrong places and it's really slowing down their body. So either extreme with all of these, the like Goldilocks, we don't want them too high, don't want them too low, we want them just right in the center. I go through what the ideal calcium ranges are, what to do if your levels are high or low, same with all of these minerals within iron balance. So if you want to see what's going on with your body, maybe you've been dairy free for years and you're you're worried that you're running into a deficiency or maybe you're displaying symptoms of slow metabolism, weight gain, pain, 
um, low mood, constipation, and you're not sure why, it could be that you have this calcium shell problem and nobody else has mentioned that. This is such a key test. And I've had people with chronic fatigue, big, big problem. And they've come from like five different practitioners. They've been to like top clinics in America for the chronic fatigue, doing fancy mitochondrial tests and experiments and really expensive protocols. They come to me, I've asked them if they've ever done a mineral test. They say, no, we do a mineral test and just find out that they have a huge calcium shell and an electrolyte deficiency, for example. And that was the thing that was holding them back. There was probably other factors, but until they addressed that, the chronic fatigue was not going to get better because they just had major mineral imbalances that have been missed that entire time. Or I have someone with really stubborn infections like SIBO or candida overgrowth, thrush, they might have copper imbalances or um, zinc deficiency or excess heavy metals in the body. So that just shows you, you might think that you have one problem. You might think that gut infections and bacterial overgrowths are the main thing, but there is such a intimate like connection with minerals and it works both ways. Having gut infections can deplete your minerals, but when you're depleted in minerals, you're more likely to have these infections and poor immune system function. So next one is magnesium. Uh, again, this person is too low. We want it higher. Um, low levels can have the same symptoms as high levels. So a high level here is called a magnesium loss pattern. Again, go through what that means in the course. But with a loss pattern, it's still that you're deficient. It's just showing in a different way. So sometimes a high level is a toxicity and excess but sometimes it's a loss pattern. It depends on the mineral, really. So a magnesium that's high or too low is just kind of a magnesium deficiency and symptoms can completely range. There's so many functions in the body that rely on magnesium. I think it's over like 3,000 different things in the body that magnesium needs, but the, these things need magnesium, sorry. Energy production, nervous system relaxation, detoxification, to name a few. So symptoms can include eye twitches, muscle cramps, pain, constipation, headaches, migraines, um, anxiety is a huge one, sleep issues, just someone who's like really tight, tense, can't relax and is struggling in, in many different areas. It could be tied with your magnesium. And then the key electrolytes in the body are sodium and potassium. Sodium um, is too low here, as is potassium. So this person is going to be chronically dehydrated, this, like regardless of what they're drinking, because the body isn't hydrating properly. They're drinking fluid and it's probably just going straight through because they need sodium and potassium to hold on to that hydration and hydrate the cells at the cellular level. Um, this person's probably going to have fatigue. They're going to have adrenal issues. This is a classic person who's trying to do everything to manage the stress, but they still feel really anxious and like nothing's helping. And it's because you can do all the meditation in the world, but if your adrenal glands don't have the basic nutrients that they need to function, they are going to be dysregulated. They're either going to be overproducing stress hormones or underproducing. So you can feel like really anxious and can't calm down or just you can't get out of bed. Either extreme, but we need to see what's going on again. Um, so the core four, as I mentioned, they need to be in a pretty good balance. And even the, the order of which you treat those things is important. Um, if you have a four lows pattern like this, you wouldn't want to go in with high doses of magnesium until the electrolytes have been addressed. Otherwise it could make that worse. So these are all the little nuances that you'll learn within the program. And these are the mistakes that I've seen people make when they just order this online on their own, don't really know what they're doing. Some reports come with some commentary from a lab, but that is just computer generated. It's not great advice. So I just order the, the graph only for my clients. I don't want all of the extra information on there because the supplements that they recommend aren't good quality and it's not specific enough to the person. It's a little bit outdated, honestly. So the, the graph is good. The report is good. Just not the extra feedback from from the lab i'm not a fan and then copper um, this person is experiencing high copper levels which again could be a toxicity or what's called a loss pattern or um, dysregulated copper because copper is not a bad thing but when it is in excess 
it has heavy metal like properties when it's high it can cause a lot of mental health conditions a lot of estrogen dominance a lot of histamine problems when it's too low you might have premature graying you might have immune system problem and um yeah histamine problems when it's too low as well uh, zinc this person's isn't too bad but too low you're going to have chronic infections too high this can be a loss pattern unless someone is mega dosing with zinc or they're using sunscreen so when you do the sample you do want to make sure that you um, aren't using any anti-dandruff shampoos or you haven't recently dyed your hair within a couple of weeks although most dyes don't affect the results too much and you want to make sure that you've not got sunscreen like rubbed near your scalp because that can might contain zinc and throw off the results so there is a bit of a a few things to be mindful of before you do the first sample and in my course i just have the the instructions ready to go so it needs to be clean freshly washed her with no products in but as soon as you sign up so you can sign up this week and get started with your your sample right away so you just follow the instructions within the the video and follow along send your hair off in an envelope to the written address and make sure it's a tracked mail and yeah you can get your results back in a few weeks and start your mineral balancing journey it's as easy as that you don't have to wait for any test kits or anything coming through so if you're like needing answers you're sick of trying to guess and throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks then definitely check out i'm balanced i'll put the link in the show notes if you want to sign up and then i'll not go through every single one of these because that's what the course is for but i've, I've mentioned the the order of operations is important all of these minerals work synergistically um and yeah kind of what a high or low level means but in the course it goes through every single one of these what a high level means what a low level means so you can really understand if you do see any like crazy imbalances but they do all work together they should all work together next thing that i want to touch on is the heavy metals so the pink box at the side of that it gives insight into your toxic exposure the the ones in the pink box are the most problematic things like mercury cadmium lead arsenic this this sample report person is quite high highly exposed so they're probably going to be feeling really terrible and we don't really want any of these present but it's completely normal to see a few of them if it's someone's first test and they have a lot of mineral imbalances sometimes the, the heavy metals don't look as bad as they actually are so it's like they're not detoxing properly they don't have enough minerals on board and i talk in the course about how problematic heavy metals are like mercury toxicity is huge and um, lead and arsenic can cause a lot of issues and really just poison the body over time but you would never just start trying to detox them until the minerals are looking better again this is like order of operations really important to do so i give some information about heavy metals but usually I find that you don't really need to do major, major work on them once the overall terrain and detoxification and mineral status is better. But that's just my clinical experience. Or if you do eventually need to work more on your mercury, you would do that like further along into your health journey, making sure that you're avoiding the source of the mercury. So maybe if you've got metal fillings in your teeth, you have to have them removed and then do further work if it's still showing up on the lab test. The green box on the video now is looking at additional metals and minerals so not all of these are harmful but we want them in the white band or lower again some of the more toxic harmful ones in excess are um, strontium and tin so that in the in the program i also show where you could be getting them from common sources of exposure so if you do see elevated levels especially if it's like time after time it's just not budging then you would look through the course the program content and see where you could be getting that from and it could be your pots and pans it could be your skincare it could be some sort of environmental exposure from your air quality and then significant ratios um this is looking at the balance let me just zoom in on the video a little bit more this is looking at the balance between certain minerals so not only do we look at individual minerals on their own we also look at how how they interplay with each other because these can give insight into different problems and imbalances within the body so the first one is looking at the calcium to phosphorus cap balance 
and the ideal range is in that white zone again in the center around 2.6 so this um, one reflects your nervous system state when it's too high it's like your body is in this hibernation really slow metabolism um zone whereas when it's too low it's your body is stuck in fight and flight stress active stress mode and that correlates to the fast or slow profile that i mentioned right at the start and obviously working on your calcium and or your phosphorus levels will help to normalize and bring that into the acceptable zone in the center and then the next one is sodium to potassium, NAK. This is your overall vitality, your spark ratio. And yeah, this person has a nice healthy level here. But when it's too high, it can show a lot of acute stress in the system. So around the time of testing, there was likely something going on. That could be physical stress. It could be emotional stress. It could be chemical uh, toxic stress. There's, it's not just about worrying about finances in your job. Stress is this umbrella term could be that you have this gut infection present you're eating foods and you're sensitive to it could be that the mineral deficiencies are causing a lot of stress in the system so it's non-specific it doesn't tell you this is exactly the reason why but it just gives you insight and allows you to explore a little bit deeper if it's low here this is really a depleted state so it's like the body just doesn't have this spark and energy production like it should do so these people usually really struggle with the energy next one third one in is the thyroid ratio and it is looking at calcium versus potassium c-a-k i love this marker because a lot of the time it comes back imbalanced and although it's not looking directly at your thyroid gland or your thyroid hormones this can be just as if not more important this is how your body is using thyroid hormone i have a lot of clients who's blood tests come back actually normal even in my ranges optimal ranges everything looks good but they're still displaying signs of a thyroid issue usually underactive so they're still feeling cold all the time they're still struggling with their energy and constipation and the menstrual cycle but the blood test shows normal so they're a little bit confused but when I ask them to look and do this mineral test we see that it's not a production issue from the thyroid it's a usage issue. So the body isn't using that thyroid hormone properly because of mineral imbalances. So it's not that the gland is broken or diseased. There might be adequate levels of T3, which is active thyroid hormone in the blood, but it's not getting into the cell. The body isn't able to use it because of calcium or potassium issues. So calcium can block the body's ability to use thyroid hormone calcium uh, potassium sorry is what transports it so it takes it from the bloodstream into the cell so you can see how if you have a potassium deficiency you might have perfect levels of t3 but they're not being used because it's not getting to where it needs to go i know that's a lot but hopefully that made made some sense and again i have a whole module a whole video on these ratios in so much more detail and it tells you exactly the the list of symptoms that you could be dealing with um, and what you need to do in order to balance things when you see what your body is dealing with and the minimum amount of time by the way that i would say to retest would be absolute minimum four months between tests but usually six to 12 months is a better range of time just to allow all of your changes to reflect and allow your hair to like start growing again before you you cut it off <laughs> and yeah look at your results next one is your hormone ratio so it's looking at zinc to copper and this often shows people struggling with estrogen dominance or um, even pms menstrual cycle symptoms so a high level um can be more which way around is it yeah high level is usually more estrogen dominance low level can be um struggling with your androgens your progesterone levels so we want a nice a nice balance in the center here so this could be that your overall hormone production is fine, but you still are struggling with symptoms because of a zinc and copper issue. They're like yin and yang. They they do reflect copper as more estrogen. Zinc reflects more testosterone and progesterone. So they should be in a nice harmony. But with a lot of people supplementing with zinc, especially the past few years to support their immune system and have antiviral properties, they are running into copper deficiency. And copper's not 
some practitioners think copper is the magical miracle supplement that that is fixing everything it can be really important but again we we can't just isolate one mineral and not look at everything else we need to look at everything in in harmony next one is another adrenal marker um when it's too high it shows overactive adrenals active stress low levels this adrenal burnout situation one after that calcium to magnesium reflects um, blood sugar so a high level can be your blood sugar is crashing too frequently so you're more prone to hypoglycemia whether you feel that or not it will be happening under the surface so you might feel like you're fine between meals you're not really craving sugar anymore but you're likely still having issues with your glucose and insulin if this is elevated if it's low you're more likely to have high blood sugar hyperglycemia and all of the maybe weight gain and sometimes um, PCOS like symptoms that go along with that it can also reflect when it gets to a certain level um, issues with lifestyle integrity so when it's too high it can show me and indicate that something in your lifestyle is isn't working at the moment and for some people this is like quite eye-opening because they're like okay maybe my job isn't right and I've been thinking about it but maybe I need to to leave or find something else or relationship so it might be something as deep as that, but it could also just be the time that you're going to bed or the type of workouts or diet that you're doing at the moment. Last one here is an infection ratio. That's This is one of the only things other than iron that isn't 100% accurate, and I don't really like it that much, but it's on here, so we'll, we'll look at it if it does come back a problem. But nine out of ten times, it comes back normal and in range. This person is a little bit low. So that can indicate viral slash bacterial infections. Same thing if it's too high. It can indicate a few things, but it doesn't mean that you don't have infections if it comes back in normal range. More testing is needed in that situation, whether it's a stool test or some sort of like viral um, antigen testing. So if it comes back with a problem, pay attention. And I show what those things may be in the course. Whereas if it comes back normal, you can't just rule out infections 100%. The only other thing that I forgot to mention on this section, another hidden cause um, of a low level below one with this vitality marker is when it drops below one, this can be a hidden sign of trauma in the body, which often reflects very well with those people who it, it flags up with. So you can obviously have trauma and not have it show up, but, but when it does show up, if someone's at a 0.5 or 0.9 below one, I think that trauma healing and looking into that aspect of um, of the health is more of a priority in that case. And then I think the last section that I want to touch on here, there's a few extra little bonus things that you can look at, but the toxic ratio is just looking at the balance between your mineral and your metal load. So when it drops into the pink zone, that's more likely to be a problem so it's like the the not balance and the metals have started to take over so the first one um, is the balance between calcium and lead so this person either has not enough calcium to to offset the lead or the lead is too high they're getting ongoing exposure from somewhere and that's depleting the calcium and yeah that reflects with other things like fe is iron hg is mercury um cd is cadmium but i'll, I'll cover all of them in the program so i know that was a lot of information and this is just a snapshot like one percent of what you're going to learn in the program let me stop sharing my screen now so you can see me fully on the video but it is definitely worth checking out and as i said you're going to get lifetime access to this so any future upgrades and changes and any additional training that i do i will be updating the course and it's a way to test and treat things without a practitioner. And even if you're working with someone already and they're not trained in HTMA, get them get them on the course. Like, say, here's some extra um, professional development that you can do to, to increase your skills. But maybe you could go through it and bring ideas to them because not everyone is using this test. And I really don't know why. I don't know why people aren't taking advantage because it's absolutely amazing and yes yeah, so much more effective especially in the early stages and if someone is limited to how much investigation they could do i'd much rather someone do this than a hormone test looking at the the stress levels or the estrogen levels 
because yes, they might have estrogen dominance, high levels, low cortisol, but this can actually tell me why, or this could actually help to move the needle and get them out of that. So to recap the benefits before we finish up and why I love this test and why the Iron Balance course is going to be amazing is because it's a full body test. It shows exactly what's going on with your mineral levels, which are the foundations and the spark plugs for the rest of your body to work properly. This is going to be a course and a program to help you long term on your health journey and keep even once you're feeling better. So it's going to help you get to a better place. But even once you're feeling good in the future, you have a tool then to check in with like I did once or twice a year. Make sure that you're staying well and that you're not running into imbalances because we're just bombarded by so many stresses and things that throw our minerals out of whack that we need to keep on top of things. You can get access to this amazing functional lab test and literally get started this week if you want to. Uh, you do have six months from when you purchase the course to use the test. I understand some people might have just done a test two months ago and they don't really want to do one right away. So you do have six months to use the HGMA that's included. Otherwise, you will lose that. So just make a note in your calendar or your diary if you are delaying it. You get all of my top recommendations for what to do with nutrition the best mineral rich foods, lifestyle factors, um, things that can affect minerals and where heavy metals are found, how to avoid them, how to manage your stress, um, how to improve digestion because they can be involved in mineral deficiencies and the top supplements to consider the practitioner grade. You'll get access to any discounts that I have, uh, the best practitioner grade supplements that aren't available to the general public. So it's a no brainer, really. And if you're ready to start your mineral balancing journey, you can sign up right now on my website, which is linked in the show notes. And I'm so excited to hear your results and how you feel in a few months time. This is just a reminder, the cheapest that it's ever going to be again. So for just £347, you can get some answers and work on this commonly overlooked aspect of health that I believe is massively important. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Let me know if you've got any additional questions and definitely check out other recent podcast episodes on minerals for more information and yeah enjoy happy mineral balancing i really hope you enjoyed this episode if you did i would love for you to leave me a rating and review on your podcast app as this helps to support the show and it allows it to reach more people with this valuable information come and say hi over on instagram i'm at viva natural health and if you haven't already, check out my website, vivanaturalhealth.co.uk for tons more free resources and to discover how I could support you further. I currently offer one-on-one -on -one consultation packages if you want my top level support, then more affordable group programs and self-paced online courses. So there really is something for everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you back here next week for another episode.